Hey y'all, I'm Tim and welcome to the Mr. Maple Show. Today, I'm standing with plant legend. We're talking here to Bob Fincham. Bob Fincham's introduced so many cool conifers, written a lot of cool books. Today, Bob's gonna bring us his top five compact or standard sized conifers. So, Bob, how long have you been growing conifers? Since 1974. 1974. We're in 2023, so that's a long time. We're talking almost 50 years. Yeah. That's pretty spectacular. So you've seen a lot of conifers in your days. Oh yeah. Yeah, I've grown, uh, I'd say almost 8,000 different cultivars wow. over the years. I grew them in Pennsylvania and I grew them in Oregon and up in Washington state, so I've been around. So this dude knows his conifers. I mean, anyways, let's go ahead and get right into your top five conifers. So. What's your top five standard or compact conifers? Well, when you asked me to do this, I had to really think. Yeah. And I had to make some uh, kind of divisions into the thing, because it's hard to pick the top five out of uh, 8,000. And so- I'd say so. <laughs> what I did was I, uh, I kind of divided them into groups. First of all, I like grafted conifers over rooted conifers because they're kind of like the worldly of the conifer world. Yeah. And um, I prefer to work with spruces over pines, although they're very attractive pines and yeah. cedars. Number five, and I went with number five, I decided, well, Picea AB's dandelion is a nice one. That's one that I produce myself by crossing uh, Picea AB's acricona with Picea AB's gold drift. And it's a nice, kind of a sort of a spreading type, mounds up a bit and it throws up leaders and then the leaders don't keep going they stop and they clump up and this thing just makes a broad mound bright bright yellow and full sun i love your hybrid conifers that you created with gold drift dandelion we started grafting at mr maple too because it it's such a cool one. and i like that one a lot i'm a sucker for yellow mm -hmm. and you give me a yellow evergreen that's an amazing plant to add into the garden for me I think it makes a great companion plant with a Japanese maple, although I know you say Japanese maples make great companion plants with conifers. Right. I say the same thing to a rhododendron guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, these uh, yellow ones, if, if it's a good, healthy yellow, it's obviously not sick. And even people who think that yellow conifers are sick will not think that dandelions are sick conifers. You have too bright of a yellow. It is. And uh, it's good for the intermediate sized garden. And I like how you described it too. You described it as a bright, bright yellow. Mm -hmm. Matt always jokes it because I will say, that's bright, bright. Yeah. That's bright, bright, bright. <laughs> I was like, oh, that's, that's a descriptor. It's even brighter. Yeah. And uh, yeah. dandelion definitely does that. Yeah, it's not just a chlorotic shade of green. It's a yeah. bright yellow. And it picks up the yellow from gold drift. Four. Next up, we've got his number four. Which I have to make a cheat sheet because there's so many to try to remember. But I went with a blue one. Um, Picea pungens thompson. Um, I, I, that was one of my first conifers when I started getting into conifers. And I love it because the needles are twice the thickness of hoop site. And it, it's a little, di it's a little bit different shade of blue, but um, it's easier to develop into an upright tree than hoop site. And uh, it's just very striking in the garden. And with the, the large needles and the bright blue color, it just stands out in the garden. Great specimen plant. And that's one of the things I love about conifers. You can't get the blue color out of a Japanese maple, but mm -hmm. you can with a conifer. And so people who are always thinking about how do I use blue in the garden, something like Thompson, that's a great way to do it. Mm -hmm. And the funny thing is, uh, the plant is not really a blue color. It's a waxy coating on the yeah. needles. And the way it reflects light makes it appear blue. And Thompson gets a real heavy waxy coating which makes it a very intense blue. It's a real winner in the garden. Hey, get you a Thompson in the garden. That one sounds pretty cool. Yeah, and plant it close to a dandelion and you have the blue and the yellow, which <laughs> you can't beat it. You can, you can't. Can. Three. All right, so now we've got his number three. Yeah, number three, I uh, really like Picea orientalis skylands. Um, Skylands is becoming more and more popular as time passes. Uh, people, more, more people become aware of it. It'll burn as a young plant, but when it gets older, uh, the burn stops. Once it can shade enough of its inner foliage, it doesn't burn anymore. And it makes a large specimen, mm -hmm. fairly narrow, 
as an oriental spruce, which is underused in the landscape. Uh, Picea orientalis is, has so many uh, attributes that are so much nicer than common Picea abies. Yeah. That's a glossy dark green. And when you get in something like Skyland, you have that glossy foliage, but it's bright yellow instead of green, making a great plant. You're speaking my language. Mm -hmm. you get, you're more yellow. Yeah. I mean, the more yellow in the garden, the more it's just going to brighten things up. Skylands, I remember the first time I saw it, and the first one I got ever was from Nancy Vermeulen. Mm -hmm. And we went and visited her, and she had, I thought it was more narrow because she trimmed hers for signwood with a bucket truck. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, man, that thing's really narrow. And then I started growing it and appreciating it and understanding it more and more as I got into conifers. But Skylands, I mean, it is a classic tree. And it's one from the Skylands estate in New Jersey. Yeah. And I went up there and saw what's said to be the original Skylands there on the property at the New Jersey State Park. And uh, such a cool conifer, and it needs to be used more. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's got that, that really nice shape to be used in the garden, gives you that vertical interest, but that also just highlighter color out there. Yeah, people are afraid that it's gonna burn. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's nothing to be afraid of. It may burn when you first plant it, but once the roots get out, gets a little bit of size, the burning stops. They have this beautiful plant for the next 50 years. Yeah. Love that plant. Two. So we're down to uh, Bob's uh, number two on his compact or standard size conifers. Okay, well, number two is one that my friend Larry Stanley found as a uh, sport on uh, Picea pungens glaucopendula, and he called it the blues. Oh, nice. I love the blues. Yeah, Picea pungens the blues is um, a, a, a very uh, striking blue, not quite as blue as Thompson, but very, a very blue selection, and probably for like a pungent coster, and it has this weeping habit, and it kind of goes up on its own at a little bit of an angle, but you can control that if you want, and um, it has this blue color and very pendulous. It does not get real wide yeah. like, uh, some, like, like a lot of the weepers, and uh, the blue color is the weeping habit. Uh, plant it with gold, and you got a real winner. Hey, I'm starting to see a really nice trend in your conifers. Color yeah, and compact and some cool weepers in there too. And those are all things I love. The blues, I've been growing that conifer and I love it. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's one of those trees that you put in your conifer or your garden and you won't be singing the blues because it's just so pretty out there. It seems to be easy to grow for a lot of people. And again, that blue color is something you can't get with a Japanese maple. It's something you can get at with a conifer. Mm -hmm. Right. And um, if you're worried about disease problems with it and such, because of the area you're in, if you have it in a place where it gets good air circulation, uh, that's going to really reduce any chance of having these uh, fungal problems that some of the pungents get in certain parts of the country. Yeah, exactly. One. We're here now with Bob Bencham all the way down to his number one compact or standard conifers. And I've got an idea what your number one is. Uh, I did see the cheat sheet, but knowing you, most people should know what your favorite conifer on this, in this category is because you've done a lot of work with this one. So what's your number one? Okay, uh, Picea ab's gold drift. Picea ab's gold drift. Now, how was gold drift found? Um, I used to own a nursery in Oregon and I had a Picea ab reflexa growing in my little arboretum and three little side shoots turned yellow and they're down right near the ground level and I thought somebody hit them with Roundup because Roundup will do that yeah. to a plant. But uh, I wasn't sure, so I cut the three pieces and propagated them, uh, grew them for several years in a holding house, and they never turned yellow again. They just were green. I set them out in the sun, they turned bright yellow. And so uh, if it was Roundup, the Roundup caused a genetic change in that one branch that had those three little shoots on it. And all the gold drifts in the whole world came from those three little shoots. That is crazy. Now, how many plants have you crossed off of Gold Drift? Uh, when I did the cross, I ended up with uh, 200 seedlings and 27 of them were yellow. And how many of those did you name? 27. <laughs> that is pretty awesome. Yeah, I, I, and it was, I introduced five of them through my Synosium Gardens that yeah. I used to have. And, um, but I propagated all of them, of course. I wanted to see how the other would grow. I didn't have, they were young, so it's hard to pick the five best. And what's happened is they, they got out and about, 
And so you can find, if you have a Pisces AB with a lemon in the name, that's one of them. Yeah. And most Pisces ABs that are yellow are from those crossings. Yeah. Because uh, if they're not a full-size tree. Yeah. And the, what I did was I crossed Gold Drift with Acricona, trying to get a golden weeper that would get Acricona cones, which would be yeah. red cones on the ends of the shoots. Yeah. And I can't believe the variety I got. I got everything from uh, almost miniature to full size. And I got everything from red cones on the ends of the branches to no red cones. You know, such a wide variety. And one of the things that I love about gold drift, and can sort of tell by my top five, is that you can mix gold and blue, or the yellow and blue together. And if you plant uh, Pisces gold drift with a Picea pungens the blue in the same hole, like do it in small plants yeah. and train them up through each other, you get this uh, blue and yellow column going up that'll weep and develop a blue and gold skirt, the blue and yellow skirt. I'm gonna have to it. do that. That sounds awesome. The yeah. color contrast, outrageous. You got two evergreens, they're gonna just contrast each other in mm -hmm. such an amazing way. Yeah, and I think Gold Drift is well on its way to being the number one conifer uh, to be used in landscapes. I think it's, it's well on its way there. I know I fell in love with it whenever I went and saw one at Buckholtz Nursery. Mm -hmm. And that's when my eyes started opening up to Gold Drift. And then I saw, as I was going around the Oregon Gardens Resort, I saw some gorgeous specimens there. And I was like, man, yeah, like, yeah. like be still my heart. That's a conifer I need in my garden. And then I started growing it and producing it because it's, it's such a good conifer out there. Yeah, and it needs full sun yeah. to bring the color out. Uh, the north side of it will be kind of green even if it's in the full sun because it's not it's the shaded side. So you need the full sun. And one of the problems you have in the southeast and a little bit in the northeast is bringing the yellow color out in gold drift because of the uh, smog that's up in the air, in the higher air, yeah. that uh, reduces the sun's radiation effect on the plant, uh, meaning it's not going to be quite as bright a yellow. Yeah. But if you're in an area where you can get the full sun on it, and in higher elevations in Carolina and places like that, uh, it, it's going to be a striking feature in the landscape. And it'll grow flat on the ground and just kind of knuckle up and over. But you can stake it up as high as you can stake it. And as soon as you stop staking it, it'll start to weep from that high point. I mean, for, for maple people, to think of it in terms of maple terminology, it's shaped very much like a Ryusen Japanese maple. Mm -hmm. You can let it just crawl across the ground. You could probably try it in a hanging basket if you want, because I know some people are doing the hanging baskets with Japanese maples. Mm. And then what we saw in Japan with Ryusen is they use it as a topsy-turvy, and then it goes to the bottom of the plant. And then it's all going down this way, and then they flip it over after years and let it, all the branches look like they've been staked. Oh, okay. So I, that'd be a cool way yeah. to grow a gold drift as well. Yeah. But uh, love, love, love gold drift. So I appreciate you coming in today. For your top five compact or standard size conifers, if, if you know anything about Bob Vincham, he is a legend when it comes to conifers. How many books have you written on conifers? Six. How many books have you written on other plants? <laughs> One. What's uh, that? What's that? Vegas. Vegas exactly. Sylvatica and Quaker Grover. I've got a lot of these books, and you can get a lot of these books from him too. What's the best way if someone wants to get some of your books on conifers and Vegas? What's the best way for them to reach out to you? Actually, Amazon. Amazon. Yeah, they're all listed on Amazon. You so, put my name in on Amazon, and uh, the books will be there. So, is it under Bob Fincham or Robert? Robert. So, type in Robert Fincham on Amazon. You can get the books directly from Bob Fincham. Amazing, amazing plants. He's got knowledge for conifers for days. I could talk to him for hours about conifers. And guess what? We're gonna have a part two with another set of top five conifers, so stay tuned for next week. <laughs> Y'all, take care, God bless, and have a great day. Thank you. Hey, I'm gonna 